All right, guys, now we're picking up with our third video, all right? So we just did some examples. Now let's keep going forward. Okay, so we talked about what happens if we know every equilibrium concentration. It's just a plug and chug into the K expression. We talked about what happens if we know all but one equilibrium concentration. Well, if you know all but one equilibrium concentration, you better know K, right? And we did, so it was still only one unknown. But now, what happens when we don't know but only one equilibrium concentration? And they're asking us to solve for K. How are we supposed to do that? The only way to know this is if you're given some more information. And while we do not put initial concentrations into the K expression, we can use initial concentrations to determine the equilibrium concentrations that do go into the K expression. And how we're going to do this is I'm going to teach you guys how to solve an ice table. Or depending upon, I think Khan Academy and some other places may call it a rice table. Um, I wasn't told... I wasn't taught to call it a rice table, so I don't call it a rice table. But if you are going to call it a rice table, then R stands for reaction. But then under this reaction, under the R, comes ice, right? What do you think I stands for? What have we been talking about? And what did I say that you would need to know to determine equilibrium concentrations? You would need to know initial concentrations, right? So the initial concentrations are the initial pressures. Well, then E is pretty straightforward. E has to be equilibrium, right? So then C is the change between the two, right? C stands for the change in concentrations between initial and equilibrium. So I stands for initial, E stands for equilibrium, and C is the change between the two. Okay, and we're going to do this ice table underneath our reaction, okay? So we're going to work through one on the slide, and then I will work one out on a piece of paper for you and show you how to do it not in a digital format. Okay, so I'm going to work through one on the slide, and then we'll do one not in a digital format. All right, so but before we do one, let's talk through the steps. Step number one in any type of these questions is figure out everything that you know. If it's Set up your ice table, and then if it's an initial concentration, put it where it belongs, under I. If it's an equilibrium concentration, put it where it belongs under E, right? And go ahead and write your K expression, right? You can write that. You can write the expression without any numbers. Go ahead and do that. Do everything you can do. Step two, if you know an equilibrium and an initial for one particular substance. Like if I know that I started with nothing, if I started with no apples and I ended with two apples, then I gained two apples, right? So I can figure out the change really easily for the thing that I know I and E for. Then once you know the change for one substance, you can figure out the change for all substances. It's just that they may not all be positive changes, right? Because if you start with something, if you start with an amount of something, then over time you're losing it. So it would be a negative change. If you don't start with anything, then over time you're gaining it. So it would be a positive change, right? So some are negative and some are positive. And also, the changes may not all be the same numerically because you could have different coefficients. So we have to do a little bit of stoichiometry on this step to relate all of our changes together. But I'll talk you through all this, so don't worry. Right now we're just talking through the steps. And then after you know changes for the remaining concentrations, you also know I for them, you can figure out the rest of your equilibrium concentrations. And then once you know the rest of your equilibrium concentrations, then it's just plug and chug into the K expression as we did last video. Okay, but it takes us four steps 
before we can do what we did last video. All right. Now I think the easiest way to sort of teach this is just to show you guys one. Okay, so let's do one together and then we'll do another one together. All right. So here, let's take, take a look at this example. So it says a closed system initially containing 1 times 10 to the negative 3 molar hydrogen and 2 times 10 to the negative 3 molar iodine at 448 degrees Celsius is allowed to reach equilibrium. At equilibrium, the concentration of HI is 1.87 times 10 to the negative 3 molar. Calculate Kc for the following reaction. So we have hydrogen reacting with iodine to make two moles of HI. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to set up your ice table. So underneath each one, so out to the left, write ICE, and then you're going to keep track of ICE under each substance. Okay, kind of like what I've done here in a table form. All right, I'm going to show you how to do this on a piece of paper too, so don't worry. But step one is tabulate everything that you know. So what's the initial concentration of hydrogen? It's given to us in the question, right? 1 times 10 to the negative 3 molar. What's the initial concentration of iodine? 2 times 10 to the negative 3 molar. What's the initial concentration of HI? They didn't tell you. If they don't give you an initial concentration, you assume it's zero. Let me say that again. If they don't give you an initial concentration, you assume it's zero. Okay, so we know those three initial, we know all of our initial concentrations, and then we know the equilibrium concentration of HI, right? It says at equilibrium, the, eight, the concentration of HI is 1.87 times 10 to the negative 3. Okay, so everything we've done so far is we're just plugging in what we know. Okay, all we're doing is we're plugging in what we know. Now, step two, I know initial and change, or sorry, I know initial and equilibrium for HI. Well, if I started with nothing and I ended with 1.87 times 10 to the negative 3, then what did I do? I gained plus. 1.87 times 10 to the negative 3. All right, that step is pretty straightforward, but now to the tricky step, because the tricky step is where you're going to use this change to determine the change for the other reactants. First of all, the reactants should have a negative change because we're starting with something. Okay, we didn't start with any products, so it was positive. But we're starting with reactants, so these are going to be negative changes. And then, secondly, the coefficients of the reactants are different than that of the product. The product is double what the reactant is. So not only are we going to change from positive to negative, but we also need to take that number and divide by 2. So what is 1.87 times 10 to the negative 3 divided by 2? Put that in your calculator. 1.87 times 10 to the negative 3. Divide that by 2. And that's all we really need to do here because it's stoichiometry, so you would divide by the coefficient of what you have, which is 2, and then multiply by the coefficient of what you want, but that's 1. So really you just need to take that number, divide it by 2, and then remember to write it as a negative value. That's your change for both your reactants. So negative 9.35 times 10 to the negative 4. All right. And then step 4 here is going to be to just sort of put those two numbers together, I plus C equals E, and you figure out your equilibrium concentrations. Now, the change is the same for both of your reactants. But since you started with different in initial amounts, your equilibrium concentration will not be the same. All right? The change is the same, but initial is not the same. So you end up with two different values for your equilibrium concentrations. So the equilibrium concentration of hydrogen is 6.5, 
times 10 to the negative 5. The equilibrium concentration of iodine is 1.07 times 10 to the negative 3. And then from here, right, make sure you, if you haven't already done it at this point, write your equilibrium constant expressions. So K is going to be equal to products. There's only one. Concentration of HI squared divided by the reactants. Concentration of H2 also divided by the concentration of I2. Right? Once you have your expression without just the expression, then plug in your numbers. But write the expression first. Then plug in your numbers. And from this point, it is exactly like we did in the first example. Just remember, you are dividing by two different numbers. Be very careful about how you put this in your calculator. If you put this in wrong, you're going to get the wrong answer. Right now, I'm nice enough to give you guys partial credit and stuff. But remember that when you go and you take chemistry in college, you're going to be in a class of 150 students. You're just going to get straight multiple choice tests. And I guarantee you this common mistake will be an answer. Okay? So this is 1.87 times 10 to the negative 3 squared divided by 6.5 times 10 to the negative 5 divided by 1.07 times 10 to the negative 3. And that equals 50.3. Okay? It's a unitless value because it is K. So now I'm going to end the video. And video four is going to pick up again with me working on a piece of paper because I want you to see what this looks like, how you would do it on a piece of paper because you're not going to have this nice, beautiful table and all these different colors and things like that. Okay? So I'm going to work through one on a piece of paper now. Okay? So I'll see you in video four.